The XC90 remains a relatively practical package. There are three rows of seats here, although getting to the third row is tough. Child seats don't fit here well either, with no latch anchors. The second row seat is roomy and comfortable. It's split into three sections. The integrated booster seat is a unique feature. While Volvos have a reputation for great front seats, these really aren't anything special. The cushions are flat and slippery. Back support could be better, and for nearly 50 grand, the lumbar adjustment should be powered. Controls look simple enough. The person-shaped pictogram for climate control airflow direction, that's pretty clever. And the radio has big knobs and buttons. Easy, right? Actually, the radio's a mess. Volvo has cobbled modern features into an antiquated design here, and it really shows. The phone menu keeps popping up all the time, and the screen is too small for iPod song titles. Putting the phone buttons atop the steering wheel spoke means they accidentally get hit. The navigation system is way behind the times. It uses a small screen in the center of the dashboard. You go through clunky menus using buttons on the back of the steering wheel spoke. There's no way you can give it voice commands like any other modern system. The only way the passenger can program the system is through this remote control. Come on, you're better off saving your money and just buying a $100 portable GPS. Another anachronism is the backup camera. It uses the same screen in the middle of the dashboard as the navigation system. Problem is that screen goes up really slowly when you shift in reverse. At least the interior is nicely finished. There's contrasting piping on the seats and lots of soft touch materials. Another plus is decent visibility out of large windows. Volvo was early in offering blind spot detection, and that's a welcome feature. Over the years, there's been a lot of engine choices. Five cylinders, six cylinder, eight cylinders. Some had turbos, some didn't. But now the XC90 is down to just one engine choice. It's an inline six cylinder. It makes 240 horsepower. Now that's 30 to 40 horsepower, less than most of the competition, and it shows. You really have to rev this engine to get the heavy SUV to be motivated. The six-speed automatic also feels a step behind with some hard and delayed shifts. All in all, the mediocre performance isn't really compensated for with good fuel economy either. Handling isn't anything special. Body roll shows up pretty early and the steering's quite slow. However, it does communicate decent driver feedback and it has a reasonable weight to it. The ride's a weak point. Impacts come through stiffly and there's a rubbery jiggle. It's not even all that composed on the highway. At least the cabin's reasonably quiet. The XC90's lackluster performance is a reflection of this car's dated design. It's simply not keeping up. There's a whole lot of competition in the luxury SUV segment, and the XC90's old news.